Before takedowns, before traffic checking, before open worlds and showtime, there was Burnout 2 Point of Impact. With the release of Burnout Paradise, how does one of my favourite GameCube games hold up? As with all Burnout games, Burnout 2 is a racing game that rewards reckless driving, either by jumping your car, taking bends in a sideways drift, passing close to other vehicles, or driving into oncoming traffic. Unlike later editions to the series, however, Burnout 2 only lets you boost once you've filled a metre at the bottom of the screen, and then you have to use it all at once in what's called a burnout. This means you have to really be careful about when you use it, and it's important to have the skill to control your car whilst travelling at high speeds. By performing manoeuvres like drifting and jumping whilst boosting, you can chain burnouts together and fly further ahead of the other drivers. While you can let go of the button if you think you're going too fast to survive the next corner, you're going to miss out on the burnout and have to fill that gauge up again from scratch. Unlike later games in the series, Burnout 2 is purely about racing. You can't take down your opponents or really have any effect on what they're doing. The traffic is very predictable, so getting good is a matter of learning not just the route of the track, but also where other vehicles are likely to be and how to exploit that in order to get more near misses and drift safely. The game handles extremely well and allows you to walk the fine line between risk and reward once you get used to how the game plays. Something that's a little disappointing is how the game looks. I really can't believe I once thought it looked realistic because by today's standards it's really quite ugly, with very low detail going to the scenery and not much more going into the cars. Worse is the fact that as it only plays in standard definition it's hard to see off into the distance for approaching traffic. But hey, at least the other drivers turn their lights on to let you know they're there, unlike the drivers in Paradise City who I'm convinced want to die and take me with them. The crashes still look pretty good with surprisingly many pieces coming off the cars and scattering over the road. The soundtrack is pretty nice and I still enjoy listening to it mixed in with the licensed tracks of the new game. I also like the way the game gives you more audio feedback about what's happening. That little beep when you get a near miss is something I could have used in Paradise. Not all the sound is good though as the engines are pretty much all the same noise but with different pitches. There's plenty of stuff to do in the game, aside from the lengthy and challenging single player racing series where you can unlock loads of different cars, there's also the crash mode, staple of the series introduced for the first time here. If you've played any of the other games in the series, Burnout 2's crash junctions offer something a bit different. There's no aftertouch or bonus items here, and following the titular point of impact, you're pretty much just a spectator. It's probably not as much fun as the Carnage criterion provided in subsequent titles, but it's a nice challenge trying to find the perfect way of tackling each stage. Another game mode that doesn't seem to have caught on is Pursuit Mode, in which you take on the role of the police and have to stop another car. Unfortunately with no takedowns in the game, all you do is hit the car a certain number of times, but it's still quite fun. There's also a multiplayer option, including up to four players in crash mode, although you do take it in turns to share the controller. It probably doesn't stand up to the experience provided by later crash modes, but it's still good, and in my experience what people like best, particularly as racing only allows two players simultaneously, and no one could ever beat me. So, is Burnout 2 worth picking up if you see it? Well, maybe. You can get almost the same experience by choosing a speed class car in Burnout Paradise, but if you want a more structured racing experience and not have to worry about missing the street that the game thinks you should take or mentally filtering out DJ Atomica, then you won't be disappointed if you buy it. Underneath the rather dated graphics and sound there's a solid racing experience to be found, and any game that doesn't have Avril Lavigne in it scores bonus points with me. 